This is weird. Let me get into the uh, Tiffany chick talking about this publishing thing. We still over uh, fair use. Y'all see it right there. Let's get into this. Some commentary on the conversation around Beyonce and album of the year. And so I just want to clear some things up real quick. So my name is Tiffany Red. I am a songwriter, a Grammy winning songwriter. I have been writing songs for 17 years. I've been in the music industry my entire adult life. I'm the founder of the 100 Percenters. I run a nonprofit and all I do. Five dollar duo at Burger King. Double up flavors when hunger dings. Whopper Junior and is advocate for the compensation of songwriters. Why? Because I was a songwriter and I walked away from the music business because of the things that I speak about. So I have extensive experience. Almost all of my friends are in the music industry and write for your favorite artists like a Beyonce. Um, so I'm not up on the internet just talking shit and like, you know, making things up. I'm not stupid. <laughs> I ain't trying to get sued. That's called defamation. I'm not defaming anybody. I am um, coming to y'all with things that I can back up. I don't never get on this platform and talk about shit I don't know. I be having, you see this? You see this thing? I am organized, honey. Okay? Y'all might not think that because you watch me on the internet and you don't know me like that for real. You only know the front facing Tiffany Red. But like, <sighs> I got a brain. Okay. Secondly, almost every artist that I have ever written for has gotten publishing on the record. Almost every record that I have done, I have written when the artist was not in the room. I'll go through my own songs. Replay. Zendaya got 10% of the publishing, I think. She did not write on the song. She didn't. That song was written at a Rihanna song camp. It was on hold for Rihanna. Then it was on hold for Rita Ora. Famous came to me and said, yo, Tiff, there's this artist named Zendaya. We should cut replay on her. So Zendaya got published in a writer credit. She did not write on replay. Um, King by Tamar Braxton. I wrote and produced that song. I wrote that song for myself as an artist in my living room, in my living room, <laughs> Tamar got, I don't know. I don't know what she ended up getting. I think I own like 85% of that song, but I should own all of it because I did all of it. She didn't write shit. Seven Streeter, who's a songwriter? This one really hurt my heart. Seven Streeter, just being honest. Me and Monsoor did that song. It was originally called Bitch. I wrote that song by myself. I'm not even really a big co-writer like that. I prefer writing songs by myself because I don't know. I just prefer to write like that. So I have a lot of records that I have placed that either have one co-writer on or that I've written solo dolo, right? Seven ended up with 10% of that record. I fought like hell for her to not have any of the publishing because she didn't write anything on it. Publishing is my only source of income. I didn't even, and by the way, <laughs> None of the artists that I'm that I've mentioned have a career anything close to in music, Beyonce. None of them do. But the reason why I'm bringing up my experience with every artist or almost every artist that I've worked with that has taken publishing that they did not earn on the songs that I wrote for them is because there is a precedent that's set. The reason why I called out Beyonce is because Beyonce is the Michael Jackson of our generation. And so if there's anybody that could reshape the precedent if there's anybody that could influence the industry that had the power and the money and the cultural like thing to say you know what y'all you're right these songwriters have been out here we've been in the street literally i have been in the street 
in front of Spotify. I've been in front of Universal. I have sat and I have talked to all y'all publishers. I've talked to y'all publishers. I've talked to the DSPs. I talked to the copyright royalty, uh, the copyright, the U.S. Copyright Office. I talked to NMPA. I talked to RIAA. I talked to Sona. I talked to NSAI. I talked to all of them. And guess what? Y'all are still broke. Okay, that's the fucking truth, right? Okay, so the people that are like, "Oh, this is not true," I had somebody call it propaganda yesterday. It's not fucking propaganda. The reality is, is there is no A-list artist, B-list artist, or C-list artist that's not taking publishing because that is the way the music industry works. And to deny that is delusional. And what I will not allow <laughs> is for anybody to make me feel like I'm in the twilight zone because I know I'm not in the twilight zone. I can pull up my records. I talked to somebody yesterday, somebody's uh, a manager of somebody who is a writer and producer on Renaissance, okay? The record is one of y'all faves. The song was written six years before it got to Beyonce. She got 25% of the song. I've talked to another, another writer who wrote and sang on one of your favorite songs. Credit not right, all kind of shit fucked up. His business still isn't handled. Beyonce was on tour last year with that record, with that person's vocals, all that. Drinking coffee every day didn't work for me, but I couldn't figure out why until I went from 184 to 123. I was doing everything right. I'm not crazy. And here's the thing. The reason why people who work for Beyonce don't talk is because they're all on NDAs. Because that's also how she works. She silences people so that nobody can speak. I'm not a writer that's written for Beyonce. I haven't shot I haven't sh shot my shot at Beyonce cuz I don't I'm not willing to give her any publishing. Not cuz I haven't had the opportunity. I've had the opportunity to work with everybody and I've turned down a lot of stuff because I'm not willing to play these games. There's a massive power dynamic happening. Please don't act like it's easy to negotiate with Beyonce and her team, because it is not. If, it was the, if that was the case, there would not be so many people coming to me like, Tiff, this is how much was taken. Shit is not negotiable, it's not. These are the terms, which means, okay, cool, then we work for you, Beyonce. So that means you're an employer. But either way, to imply that the artists do not have to be responsible for the business practices that they exercise with songwriters to, to, to insinuate that the only way you are treated fairly is if you are managed by one of the gatekeepers is bullshit. It's bullshit. You shouldn't have to be in company with a gatekeeper to be treated fairly. You should not have to have a gatekeeper on your team to make a livable wage off of music that is making people billionaires. All right, I don't need to see no more. I'm gonna say this to you, Tiffany Ray, because I'm sure you're gonna get this video. Because somebody's gonna say, Oh, Choke was talking about you. And you're gonna come and watch and you're gonna see what I have to say. Okay. I've been in this entertainment industry almost 30 years now. I think this year will probably be 30 years. This has been going on before Beyonce, right? And all I'm going to say to you, Tiffany, is this, sweetheart. And you should know this by now. You don't get what you deserve in this industry. 
possibly in life. You get what you negotiate. And Beyonce and those of Beyonce's kind know that in the music business, the only money outside of publishing is touring or you're not going to make no music. I mean, you're not going to make no money. So if you're an artist and you didn't write none of the music, you're not getting no publishing. You're not getting no checks. If you're an artist like Beyonce and everything that you put out gets attention every album you put out is going to be a hit even if you didn't write it just because of your vocals your stage presence your energy your star power just your name beyonce if somebody gets a song to you and one song just catch whether it's single ladies uh the joint nino wrote uh neo wrote uh irreplaceable um whatever it may be beyonce has learned that she ain't got the gift of writing but she got the gift of making songs huge songs so like i said you don't get what you deserve you get what you negotiate Beyonce don't deserve writer's credit or neither any of these other people you may uh, been have talking about, Tiffany, because they didn't write. But if you go back to what I said at the beginning of this, Tiffany, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you negotiate. And that works for the person at the top and at the bottom. Now, Beyonce knows that she's one of the biggest artists, but she ain't got the writing skills. So if she do all these albums and she ain't get no publishing or nothing, only money she gonna get off of this is touring. So what do she do? She negotiates. If I sing your song, you give me half of the publishing. Because publishing is 100% on each song. Every song has 100%. 50% go to the writer and the composer, and the other 50% go to the producer. So even though Beyonce may not be writing and doing no arrangements, this, that, and the third, she just come in there and sing with somebody, sent her a tape of uh, a song that's demoed, and all she got to do is go in there and re-sing it her way or whatever, and then do no writing. Beyonce learned over the years, as well as everybody else, there's no money in this without publishing. Now, you can either agree to this so you can be able to say, oh, I, got, I wrote a song for Beyonce and get a, a, a Grammy, even though she took 50% of the publishing. Or you can say, no, I'm not giving you no, no publishing. So 50% of nothing is what? Nothing, right? So Beyonce and, and people like her, I'm not saying I agree to it, but what I'm saying is don't agree to their terms or what they negotiated and then bitch later because you looked up and you feel like you broke now. And you feel like you probably would have more money if you had all your publishing. But when when you got that phone call and they was like, yo, Beyonce want the song. 
but she won 25% of the publishing. Don't act like it was the people say, shit, I don't give a fuck. She can have half of it. It's a Beyonce song. I, I don't care as long as I, I get the credit on there. I get writer's credit. Yeah. And she just going she gonna to take 50? Yeah. I don't care. It is Beyonce. And, and they go right on and they agree to the terms. And then years later, they bitching, crying, and moaning because, oh, I wrote the song. Beyonce ain't do nothing. Uh, duh. We all know Beyonce is not Candy Burris. We know she don't, she's not known for writing. So, uh, why did you agree to it? So, I understand where Tiffany is coming from when she says, you know, the business practices have to change and Beyonce can change. And this, that, and other, but Beyonce ain't gonna want to be advocating for uh I take your song and I can't get a piece of the publishing. I'm Beyonce. I sing Joe Smo from Idaho song, and my album go platinum, and now they are platinum writing artists. Or if I do they single and it's a hit and, and they go platinum, they are platinum writing artists for, for Beyonce, which would give them so much work. Look how much work Neo got out there. He, uh, a couple of his records landed. So... I, I'm with her as, you know, if you wrote the song, you should, as a, and, I, and I say that as a writer because I write all my music. You know what I'm saying? As a writer, as a creative person, yeah, I will want 100% of my publishing. You know, of course. But if uh, a, a, a rapper wanted one of my songs, and they didn't write on it. And they say, yo, I'll take this. This is going to be my first single. You know, you know, part of the deal is I I get half the publishing. I can't agree to it and then later be mad at uh, the decision that I made to um, allow them to take co-writers credit or give them credit or whatever i can't be mad at it uh i can't be mad at them for asking it's just business you know what i'm saying so you could sit there and saying yo you don't have to give beyonce the song you have the right to say no you know what i'm saying and most of those people Of course, she's going to have you sign an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement. Because one, she's not going to want to, people to know what she paid you to do the song. She's not going to want you to tell people, oh, she took 25% of the publishing. She's not going to, she don't want you to tell people what y'all negotiated. Because then, then once everybody know the deal, then when she go to negotiate, now everybody's looking for the same thing. So there's a lot that come in with the NDA. You know, but let me see if Beyonce got credit on Irreplaceable.
So when you look up irreplaceable, right? Even though we know Neo was a, who wrote it, right? He wasn't the only person, right? These guys come up before Neo, these two white guys. Right? But when you look right here on Wikipedia, the song was written by Schaefer, Neo Smith. And then right here, you got Irreplaceable, a song by American singer Beyonce for her second studio album, B Day, in 2006. The song was written by Schaefer Neo Smith, Tor Eric. Hermison, Mikkel S. Erickson, Espen Lind, Amon B. Jolen, B. Jolen, and then Beyonce, and produced by Stargate and Beyonce. Right? Now we know Beyonce is not a producer as far as machinery. But she could have said, hey, let's put this here and put that there. And this should sound like this and that should sound like that. And that makes her a producer on the song. Right? The way we were told, Neo wrote the song. Right? But these people could have added a little stuff here and there and there and there and there. And then boom. Right? But... Oh, he wrote Neo's joint too. Let me love you. And Rihanna's take a bow. But like I said, Beyonce is going to get do that to get the credit and to get the publishing because she know that's where the, mon the money is. She's not going to get no money just singing it. You know what I mean? So if this person wrote it and this person produced it and she just sing sang it, Whatever advance she got to sign to do the label and got to recoup her money, that, that's it for her. She's not going to see nothing else until she go on tour. So for her to negotiate to get publishing on some of these records that she's taking from people, technically, morally, it ain't right. Business-wise, it's a negotiation. You ain't got to do it. You ain't got to sell her the song. You know what I'm saying? But you get what you negotiate. You can always tell Beyonce, what? Girl, kick rocks. And if she wants the song bad enough, she's still going to take the song without getting the credit. Because I'm sure it's people that brought her stuff and she told them what her practices were and they was like, uh-huh. Because she ain't pulling that on the L.A. reading the baby face that write a song for. That ain't going to happen. So you got to know how to negotiate and tell Beyonce and those like her that want publishing for stuff that they didn't write to kick rocks. And if you don't get the song placed, that's on you. You know, 50% of something is better than 50% of nothing. But to each his own. That's all I got to say. To each his own. You know, you ain't got to follow what everybody else do and i'm a strong uh advocate for that be yourself you know stand on your own stand your ground don't give in because me i went i wouldn't give it up you know what i'm saying beyonce want this song bad enough 
I'm going to get my 50% of the song. I'm not even splitting nothing well if she wanted that bad. That's it. So choke no joke. I will catch y'all tomorrow in the morning. All right. You know what it is. It is 12.55 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Which means it is about 9.55 on the West Coast. And about 6 a.m. over in Europe. All right. Y'all know what it is. What about Corey Holcomb? I I gotta go watch Corey Holcomb. I seen him in um Ashley Larry going back at it. But uh let me get to the origin of that before I touch on it. I send him on. You know what that means. Send him on. Yeah, you know it. I get to it tomorrow, good. Choke no joke. Y'all know what it is. I catch y'all in the morning. Make sure y'all hit that subscribe button, man. Y'all be acting stingy with that subscribe button. Hit that subscribe button, man. You come here all the time and you just don't hit the subscribe button. You know, hit the like on the way out. I got love for you, though, still. All right? Good night. Shout out membership, gang. I see you. Choke no jokes. This cinnamon. All right? Holler back. Tasha Tanae. Good night. No joke, Jack Brown. Yeah, now. Choke, no joke, Jack Brown. Yeah. This what ATL in New York sound like. Let's go. Y'all hating ass niggas, I see y'all. Show get busy, that's why I got the crown. Hate in the air. You clowns, I see the envy that you breathe, jealousy. What you need is your own damn hustle. Stop worrying about mine. Nigga, I'm popping cause I put in time. Came out modeling, camera in hand. Still get busy with the mic in hand. Streets pulled out, niggas got sprayed. Niggas turn on you when they see you get paid. The intimidation in your face. Where's the love? What's taking place? You want my gold and my ducats. Cause my money overflowing out of buckets. Shot them in public. Made people holler, scar on his face for the money and the power. I'm the choker, choker. The truth in the industry made me the choker, choker, choker. The truth in the industry made me the. Came at me fool, got in, was young Thought talent made you rich, damn was dumb More to make, cake from crumbs You gotta be sweet, G or native tongue My heartbeat went into overload When Larry tried to turn me into a mole Told me show my curly to the CEO I didn't think it's funny, so his jaw hit the floor And grabbed that chair that broke his back then realize that's a hate attack Harassment comes assault, you in the maze No way out, like Puff and Mace Touch me, tease me, I catch a case Nigga, you ain't straight as your poker face Father law guard in that game I fold This sun don't tick, demon time don't hold I'm the Choker Choker the truth in the industry made me the choker, choker, choker. The truth in the industry made me the choker, choker. The truth in the industry made me the choker, choker. 
on the ones and twos. Joker. What y'all want to do? I'm here now. Eat a wall, stand up. Shout out to the bomb squad. Joke, no joke. You already know. <laughs> Y'all know I love that cooch. You know who this is. I love that cooch. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's the A thing. Clean cooch. Let's go. Yo, what's up? My nuts when I wake up. Got more than wood and I just bust one. And my hog and knee. I'm Ron Osley. Between the sheets. And she want to ski. And just shout with me. With what I thought was pee. She rolled the D. Her water broke B. Not pregnant, but baptized me. I'm down for more love, but change the sheet. She said, please. I want more. Next thing I know, mattress dripping the floor from her juices. Oral had me stoned. Had a Corinne and Medusa in one. And when I look in her eyes, between her thighs, I tell you no lie. Ain't shit won't buy. I rob and take it for me to taste it. Red lobster, pussy, biscuit, freshly baked. Uh, eat that coochie all night. She spray my face like sugar spray. I love her. I eat her coochie all night. She spray my face like sugar spray. I love her. My nuts when I wake up, got more than wood and I just bust one. In my hog and knee, I'm Ron Osley, between the sheets, and she want to ski. And just shout with me with what I thought was pee. She rolled the D, her water broke B. Not pregnant, but baptized me. I'm down for more love, but change the sheet. She said, please, I want more. Next thing I know, mattress dripping the floor from her juices. Oral had me stoned. Had a Corinne and Medusa in one And when I look in her eyes Between her thighs I tell you no lie Ain't shit won't buy I rob and take it For me to taste it Red lobster, pussy, biscuit, freshly baked uh, Eat that coochie all night She spray my face like sugar spray I love her Choke, no joke, I'm out See you in the AM. Good night. Tasha Tanae and Cinnamon. All right. Miss A. Matthews, Tasha Rain, Daniel Krills. Y'all know what it is. Good night.